Hi everybody, so today I'm going to make a video that will interest about three people. I mean, plus the change. It's about the tritone sub in jazz, so like when, for instance, we have instead of a G7 going to C major 7, we have a, a D flat 7 or D flat 13 or something going to C major 7, right? And the mighty theme from the finale of Brahms's Fourth Symphony, which On the guitar, it sounds a little bit less impressive, but I'll do my best. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a um, potted history of where this comes from. Uh, in 16th century music, there's something called the Phrygian Cadence. So, for instance, if we're in key of A minor, the Phrygian will be on five, right? This is modal theory, okay. And in this case, we, I don't know if you watch my cadences video, but there's different voices within the cadence. There's the tenorizans, which goes down a step, and the cantizans, which goes up a step. And if we're in this modality, the tenorizans will go down a half step, flat two to one, if you like, in modern terms. And the uh, cantizans, Will, the soprano voice will go flat seven to one. So we'll end up with this. Put in the other voices. Okay. And this was heard in the um, 16th century as being a tonality in itself. We go, because music was more modal then. We're going to the Phrygian mode. However, um, there's a big debate apparently in the uh, academic circles about whether or not that's the way 18th century musicians heard it. Heard it. Um, it's certainly common in Baroque music, um, and often it's a sort of rhetorical thing that you might have after a little bit of um, minor key stuff. So if I'm in A minor, for instance. Let me go. This is a uh, sort of descending tetrachord. Going down to a G, G63, which is uh, E minor, with the G in the bass, and then to this um, this chord, which will be um, the uh, Phrygian cadence, right? And we can expand this a little bit, so it's not it's just a uh, six-three chord; it's just a D minor in first inversion in modern terms. But you can also add another note to that. We can make this a D minor sixth and invert it. About the tuning to give it a bit more scrunch. This guitar is never in tune. Anyway, um, that's the, the sound there, right? So uh, over time, people started to use more um, chromatic harmony, I guess. But uh, one of the things we like to do is they like to think, well, actually, we can make this cadence a little bit more conclusive. Instead of going up a whole step on the top voice, we altered that note and turned it to a half step. And you get this, which is also known as the augmented sixth, because this is a sixth. You augment the sixth, you get this thing which looks like a, you know an F7 chord, E major, right? And this is actually really common in jazz standards. You see this all the time. Um, in jazz, I think we tend to think of that as being a tritone sub, like for B7. But um, in classical terms, it's thought of as a different chord because of the way it's spelt. Um, and this this tritone thing is interesting. This will come up in a sec. Now, um, this is always usually found on the flat six of the key going to five. Now, what's interesting about this uh, Brahms thing is it really isn't that. If I play it in isolation, because we've been playing lots of stuff in A minor, you're going to hear F7 sharp 11th, which is what happens when you take a D minor sixth chord, put it in first inversion, and then raise the sixth D up to a D sharp. That might sound like it's an A minor, but in context, it is not. It feels very much like it's in E, which is really interesting. Um, and the, indeed, like later on, the melody here. Notice that leap of the 
of a of a of a fourth there at the end, it sounds like a bass line, and that's because it is a bass line. Okay. Okay, and we put chords to it. What's actually this? Oh. I'll do a video on that variation later. Um, it sounds a little bit like a rule of the octave, as you can hear as well. So in fact, in a sense, this is like the bass line in the melody. But this flat two, root move is really quite rare. Um, um, there may be other examples. Who knows? I, I'm not an expert on 19th century music or really any classical music, but um, this strikes me as an early example of what we might call that subbing in for the dominant function, because that is definitely E. And in a sense, it harks back to the time of the 16th century, at least, when people thought of this Phrygian key as being... Um, a thing in itself rather than just a you know way of setting up the A minor. It's a half cadence, which is how we might think of it in the 18th century music, although not necessarily, apparently, depends who you ask, apparently. So um, I think in a way this is Brahms sort of harking back to the past and saying, look, here, this is the modal key center. 